that a number of you were able to join us yesterday for our virtual Sunday service, uh, which I asked two important questions, which I think Easter makes us face up to. First of all, did Jesus rise? And second, does Jesus rule? Did Jesus rise? A question of historical fact. And does Jesus rule? A deeply personal one uh, affecting our lives. And I invited people yesterday, challenged people to check out the evidence. Uh, and uh, we're going to do that in my thoughts for the day this week as well. You see, there are different theories that people have put forward to explain the evidence presented to us in the Gospels. And yesterday we thought about uh, one such theory, uh, the so-called twins theory. The idea that when Jesus came back from the dead, it wasn't actually him. It was somebody who looked very like him, whether a twin brother or a, uh, another brother or just someone uh, unrelated, but who had the same physical characteristics. And so he was confused uh, with Jesus. And the disciples uh, thought that uh, Jesus had come back to, to uh, life, whereas, in fact, it was someone else. And Thomas seems to disprove the twins theory by insisting that the same person who had the marks of crucifixion on Good Friday is the one who's come back to life. In other words, Thomas dispels for us the twins theory. If you missed that and you want to find out more about the twins theory, you have to watch uh, yesterday's virtual Sunday service. But today we're going to look at another theory and it's called the swoon theory. The swoon theory, swoon being the old fashioned word for fainting. Uh, because the idea of the swoon theory is that Jesus never actually died at all. As he hung on the cross, he passed out, went into a coma or something like that. Uh, and the soldiers uh, thought he was dead, put him in the tomb and in the tomb he revived. And so when he came back, supposedly from the dead, he had not actually been dead at all. Let me read you a couple of verses from John's account of the crucifixion that I help, I think, dispel the swoon theory. This is John chapter 19. Uh, we start halfway through verse 31. Because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who'd been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. Remember that Jesus had a, a criminal crucified on either side of him. The reason that the Romans broke the legs of crucified criminals, sorry it's a little bit unpleasant but I've got to tell you this detail, was that uh, the only way you could survive uh, on the cross was by pushing yourself up in order to be able to take your next breath. So if you broke the legs of the people hanging on the crosses, they'd very, very quickly suffocate within a matter of a few minutes. That's how they hastened death if they wanted to do so. But, verse 33, when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. Uh, it's sometimes said that the Romans were very good at lots of things, but where they their real expertise showed through was in killing. The Romans knew how to kill people and they knew how to kill their prisoners. And when they put someone on the cross, that person was not going to come down alive. And uh, they were so sure of this that Roman death squads had an instruction that if they allowed anybody to escape death, then they themselves would pay for it with their own lives. That's why when Jesus appeared to be already dead, dead they didn't just take it at face value. They put this spear into his side in order to confirm death and they get the confirmation they want. Because when the blood flows out, it's already separated into the water uh, and uh, the blood. In other words, the plasma and the red blood cell, something which happens only after death. And the Roman soldiers took that as a clear sign that Jesus really was dead. You see, Jesus did not simply faint on the cross and then revive in the tomb. If he had done, how could he possibly have pushed aside that enormously heavy stone? And how could he have pretended that he was uh, risen victoriously if he was still uh, very close to death, having survived this awful experience? No, the Roman soldiers help us to see that the swoon theory is no uh, is no more of an explanation than the twins theory was. It really does not stand up under close scrutiny. If you want to deal with the evidence some other way, then you need to think of another theory and we'll come to another theory or two on Friday. But for now, I'm going to thank God for the way that the story uh, presents us with the evidence. So perhaps you'd like to join me as I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the evidence presented in the gospel stories that Jesus truly rose from the dead physically. He was dead 
and he came back to life. And we thank you for the historical fact of Jesus's resurrection, proving that Jesus deserves to rule in our lives today. Please help us to follow him more and more as our Lord and our Saviour. We pray in his name. Amen. May God bless you. I hope you have a good day.